All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about writing formulas for ionic compounds. And to write the formula for an ionic compound, what you're going to do first is write the formulas for the cation and the anion separately. And the next step is to adjust the, sub, the, adjust the subscripts so that the charges cancel. And usually the way that we do this is by finding the least common multiple of the charges of the cation and the anion. And um, another note, too, uh, the cation, uh, just, just like when we name ionic compounds, the cation comes first. Uh, that also applies to writing the formula. That's just the convention that we use. The positively charged ion or the cation always comes before the negli negligibly charged anion. So let's go through a couple of examples. The first example that I've chosen is rubidium bromide. So we said that the first step was to write the formulas for the cation and the anion. Well, if we write, <clears throat> if we write the rubidium ion, that's going to be Rb plus, right, because rubidium is a group 1A metal, so it forms a plus 1 cation. And if we write the formula for the bromide ion, that's just going to be Br negative, because Bromine is actually a halogen. It's a 7A. It's, it's in group 7A, so it carries a negative 1 charge. And then uh, adjusting the subscripts on this, on this particular example is you know, pretty unnecessary because you have a, just a 1 to 1 ratio of charge. So if we just put them together 1 to 1, then the charges will cancel. So our final formula is going to be RBBR. That is the correct formula for rubidium bromide. Let's do another one. Let's see, how about... Calcium fluoride. What is the correct formula for calcium fluoride? Well, the calcium ion is going to be Ca, and it carries a charge of 2 plus because it's a group 2A metal. And fluoride is going to be F minus because just like bromine, fluor fluorine is also a halogen, so it's going to have a negative 1 charge. And if we adjust the subscripts, um, it looks like if we leave the calcium alone and we double the amount of fluoride ions, then it looks like we'll have a you know, we'll, we'll, the sum of the charges of the cations will cancel out with the sum of the charges on the anions. So the correct formula is going to be CaF2. So pretty straightforward. Okay, let's think of another one. How about this one? Ammonium carbonate. Okay, here we have two polyatomic ions. So what's the, the formula for the ammonium ion? That's going to be NH4 plus. And for carbonate ion, it's going to be CO3 2 minus. So this time, if we double our cation and leave the anion alone, then we'll have uh, the sum of the charges of the cations uh, canceling out with the sum of the charges on the anions. So we're going to double NH4, and we're going to leave CO3 2 negative alone. So if we have NH4, CO3, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the NH4 in parentheses and give it a subscript 2. The parentheses are particularly important because if you put just a subscript 2 in there, that, that would be incorrect. That would actually, there would be, that would mean that there were 42 hydrogens instead of uh, two um, NH4 ions. So the parentheses are extremely important. So this is the correct way to write the formula for ammonium carbonate. Uh, let's do one more, a tricky one. Aluminum sulfate. 
So just as in we as in the last couple of examples, let's uh, let's write out the cation and the anion separately. So the aluminum ion is going to be Al three plus, and the sulfate ion is going to be SO four two minus. So if you're trying to adjust the subscripts so that these two will cancel. Well, in this problem, it's not exactly as easy as just doubling one and leaving the other one alone. Here we have, you know, if we, if we double the two negative here, we'll get negative four, and that doesn't cancel with, you know, with three. And if we double three, that'll give us something that's even greater than the negative two. So, so we're kind of stuck in this rut where we have to sort of find the least common multiple of the two of these. And if, if it turns out, it actually turns out that the least common multiple of three and two is six. Uh, if you if you remember your math. So what I like to do is I like to just write out the formula as if you know there are no subscripts at all first and then I kind of like to assign the subscripts later on. So I'm going to do just that. Al SO4. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going our uh, our cations are going to total up to a positive charge of 6, and our anions are going to total up to a negative charge of 6. And this is going to be, the sum of the charges is going to be 6 plus, and then some of the charges on the anions are going to be 6 minus. So aluminum, well, what do we have to multiply 3 by to get 6? 2, right? So I'm going to give it a subscript of 2. And for the sulfate ion, we have 2 minus. So what do we have to multiply 2 by to get negative 6? 3, right? 2 times 3 is negative 6. So I'm going to put this in parentheses and give it a subscript 3. And that is our formula for aluminum sulfate, Al2SO4 in parentheses subscript 3. So. Hope this video helps. Like I said uh, in my last video on naming ionic compounds, uh, you want to be comfortable with uh, going back and forth between names and formulas. So good luck.